Don't panic. Has this happened to you? I'll teach you how many stitches to cast on, how many rows to knit, and how much yarn to buy right now. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Help! Ah! How many stitches should I cast on, Kristen? How many rows should I knit? And how much yarn am I going to need for that queen size blanket? I get to answer these questions all the time, but I want you to be able to answer them as well. This is all about interactive knitting calculators, and you can get it by clicking on the link below to get this. Um, this is our blog, and this has all the calculators in it that you're going to want to use. So you can go and read this article. It gives you lots more fantastic information. I'm going to show you right now how to use the calculator. So we're just going to scroll on down. It, this is telling you what you're going to need, and I'm going to move this aside and show you everything. All right, so let's get into what we need. You have got a swatch that you're going to need. It's made in the yarn that you're going to work on your project. Make it on the needles or the, to or the loom that you're going to be using, and you're going to make it in the main stitch pattern that you want. This is made in a stocking net because my pattern is a main a stocking stitch pattern. I also need Need a measuring tape and um, that's it as far as calculating uh, casting on stitches and how many rows to make if you want to calculate yardage you're going to need a postal scale that measures in grams or ounces I like to measure in grams and then you're gonna need this yarn label because you want to know how many yards or how many meters that you need to cast on all right, so let's get into the calculators. You're first gonna make a gauge swatch, and this talks about all about making a gauge swatch, so go to that on how to make that gauge swatch. So once you've got your swatch made, um, you're gonna want to go to this cast on calculator here. And we're going to put in our width of our um, measured area for gauge. Now, I don't measure the entire swatch, I just measure across in um, either two inches or maybe four inches. You're gonna put in that number and then you're gonna put in uh, how many stitches that you count in that number. So I'm gonna show you how mine works and then we're gonna put in the project width that you actually want it to be. So I'm gonna move this aside and show you. So uh, first of all, I've measured across and I'm gonna leave out these two side um, the, the, the inches on the side this is about a six inch project and I'm measuring in the middle four inches and I've measured across and I've counted how many stitches that is. All right. And then later on for your rows calculation, you're going to do the same. Now I don't do the, the sides and the top and bottom because I think it's a more accurate, um, representation of what that is. So let's move these aside and I'm going to show you. All right. So the cast on calculator, I'm just going to put in here first the width across that I measured uh, and I counted all my stitches. So I did four inches, all right? And then I'm going to put in the number of stitches that I counted. And I counted 14 in this area, 14. And now I'm going to put in the width of the project. I know that I need 30 inches wide. I'm making a flat panel and I'm gonna put in 30 inches. Now you can use inches or centimeters in these. It doesn't matter in the way we've done the calculators. And then I just scroll down and look, it's already put the number in for me. So I know that if I want to make this whole panel um, in 30 inches wide, I can use 105 stitches. Now I can divide that in half or um, in threes if I want to make it in two panels or three panels. Um, or I could even put um, well, what, what width I want my um, that particular panel in. So let me check. I'm going to do divide it in half. I'm going to say 15. I want to do two panels at 15. So it says that my stitches, I need 52 and a half stitches here. Okay. I see 52 and a half. Now I know in my pattern, um, I want to adjust it to whatever pattern that is. So in my pattern, I know that I need an odd number of stitches anyway on my cast on. So I'm going to make it 53. So that's really helpful for me. Now I'm going to scroll down and figure out how many rows that I need to work. Okay, so we're just going to use the same swatch example. When I did count those uh, stitches that I told you about, I did it in four inches. So let's just move that in so you can see it, four inches. And then I got, let me look at my notes, I got 19 and a half rows, so 19.5. And then I'm going to put in my project length, and my project length is going to be 54 inches. And as soon as I do that, look, it came up how much I need it. So these are the rows that I need. It's 263.52. Now that's if I was to count all those rows out. 
I will tell you this though, if I need a finished length of 53 or, or 54 uh, and I get that many rows and it's that decimal point, just remember you do have a cast on and a bind off. So what I do is I measure the length here and then I measure the length here, which ended up being a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. And then uh, I add that together and that is a half an inch and I can actually take off this half inch here. So I only need 263 rows. If I knit 100, uh, 264 rows, then uh, my project is gonna be a little bit longer. And if you're trying to match it up to something else in size, then, um, then that's, uh, you're gonna have to account for that. All right, so let's scroll down to the project yardage uh, calculator. Okay, this is how many skeins do I need? How many balls of yarn do I need to buy? So um, we're gonna scroll up here and it says, um, now this is not an exact calculation and it's designed to give you a ballpark estimate. It will be close, but it can't be perfect. It also isn't gonna take into account like changing yarn colors and things like that. So if you need an extra ball of yarn, I would do so. Uh, it's always a good call to just get one more ball of yarn in case of whatever. It's, it's always a good um, insurance policy to get one more ball. And, and besides, there's always projects you can use them in. So we're gonna calculate the yardage. You're gonna need a few more things here. So um, we're gonna need to get the yarn information off of our ball. So we've got the wrapper here. And then we're going to look at the weight. Now you can put in ounces or grams. I recommend grams, even though you normally might speak in ounces um, in the US. Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm in the US, but I like to use grams because I think it's more accurate. So I put in 150 grams here. So let's type one, five, zero, and then scan yardage in yards or meters. And then I'm gonna use yardage because that's what I'm most familiar with, 312. So 312 yards. And then I'm gonna scroll down here and we're gonna put in our swatch information. Now, you use your gauge swatch that you already made to collect this information, but the width and the length measurement of the swatch are for the entire swatch, not the small section that you measured to calculate the cast on. So you're going to measure the entire thing. So let's look at that again. We're going to measure from, and I and I blocked this, I did a light steam blocking on here so that it wouldn't roll on me. And then I measured all the way from here to here, so to the very outmost edge, and I measured from here to here. So I'm including the cast on and I'm including the bind off in my numbers for yardage because I'm going to have one in mind anyway and it allows for that extra amount of yards. So um, I've got all that and then I also count in there, my stitches and rows. So my whole width of the swatch, I measured at six inches, and then the whole length or height of the swatch is 6.75. Okay, that's what mine measured. And then the number of stitches across, I know that I cast it on 20 stitches. Okay, my number of rows is 34. All right, this is where we get into the weight of the swatch. If you've never weighed a swatch, um, the easiest way to do it is just turn on your postage scale. You can actually go to the post office if you don't have one. So um, you can get this at many different stores. Uh, I actually did get it at a uh, office supply store. So we're gonna go here and I'm going to put my, um, my swatch in. And I'm just gonna make sure it's laying on there right. It told me nine um, and then earlier it actually said 10. So it's kind of teetering on that number. See the 10? So I'm gonna go ahead and and and, um, and use the 10 number and because uh, that's probably the most accurate. And uh, then that's, that's all I need for that. But make sure your scale is set to either grams or ounces when you're reading this thing. All right, so we're putting in our weight of the swatch, which is 10. And then I'm gonna scroll down and my project width is going to be 30 inches and it's going to be 54 inches long. And when I go down here, it's crunching the numbers. All the little calculating elves have already done their work. And it is a total of 832 yards or meters, whatever number you put in. And then the number of skeins, it's already programmed it in for you because I told it how many is in my skein. And so it says that I need three. Now, if I get the calculator out and I look at this, I can actually show like a regular 
regular calculator, and I take 832 divided by 312, which is my yardage, um, I actually get 2.67. So I can see how close this is to three. And if I have a color changing yarn like this one, I'm gonna go ahead and buy one more just to be sure. So if it's on the low side, then you're probably fine with three. So you need to use your judgment there. But that is it. And that is how you make this um, cast on calculator, row calculator, and yarn calculator work for you for our interactive calculators so that you don't look like this next time. I hope that that's helped you today and I hope next time you don't look like this. <laughs> Please leave me a comment below and tell me if that has helped you or if you have any other questions and feel free to chat amongst yourselves, talk amongst yourselves. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.